Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love every minute of it? I sure do. Except the, except the odd-numbered minutes. And uh, some of the even-numbered minutes. Some of the, a few of the seconds are great, though. Milliseconds really stand out. Today's video, uh, I'm going to talk about some annoyances that I have with local variables and optimize for unknown hints. Now, you're probably used to hearing me complain about these from the, uh, from the, uh, you know, the, the problems that they cause with cardinality estimation and not using the smart part of the histogram to figure out how many rows might qualify for a where clause. We're going to look at something a little bit different in this video because it's something that I run into quite a bit when I'm trying to help clients with things and it makes it really, really difficult uh, to figure out, um, well, if I, if, I, if I say it here, it'll give away the whole video. So I'm going to wait and say it. Let's just say I'm sufficiently annoyed with local var variables and unknown hints that we need to talk about them from a completely different angle this time around. But first, let's talk a little bit about money. Uh, like, if you want to give me four bucks a month, you totally can. There's a link in the video description where you can join the channel uh, with a membership subscription thing and it's cheap and it's worth it because you get a lot of free content out of it. Uh, if, if four bucks is beyond your means, maybe, maybe your rates are a little too reasonable uh, and, and you can't afford four bucks. That's totally cool. I like likes, I like comments, and I like new subscribers. I like new faces showing up in the comments saying, Hey Eric, how you doing? That's about all it takes to make me happy. All the other stuff just, you know, buys me wine, I guess. Uh, if you need help with your SQL Server, if something that I talk about in one of these videos uh, strikes you as something that you think that I would be particularly valuable to assist you with, uh, any of these things, my rates are reasonable. If you want some high quality, low cost training uh, for life, forever, uh, you can get about 24 hours of it for about 150 bucks US uh, with the discount code that's also in the video description. So the more things you click on there, the better off we all are, right? In reality, just clicking on the links in the description and it will improve all of our lives greatly. Uh, if you would like to see me live and in person, you can do that. November 4th and 5th in Seattle, Washington. I don't know if there are any other Seattles. I'm, I'm unaware of them, but I'll be there um, for my birthday. And I'll be hanging out with Kendra Little for two full days of performance tuning magic and wonder. It's going to be like you were a kid again, right? Watching someone do like one of those finger tricks where they, ah, where'd it go? I wasn't flipping anyone off, I promise. The, the, I can't blur this later, so screw it. Uh, anyway, uh, if there's an event near you that you think I would make a good speaker at, a good addition to the lineup, let me know what it is. Uh, if they're accepting pre-cons uh, and I can, you know, cover the cost of travel to get there, I'll happily show up and teach people live and in person. That's, that's my favorite. So with that out of the way, let us begin our festivities. Let us, let us, let us start the party. We will commence. We'll commence with the fun. So let's go over to Management Studio. And uh, I've got a store procedure here. Just to make sure that we are thorough in our investigation, I've got a store procedure here that does uh, three things. <clears throat> uh, it's got one query that just takes some regular old parameters right there. Right? That's just the normal parameter way of doing things. Uh, and then I have a second query where I declare a couple variables and I use those instead of the parameters here. And then I've got a third query where I, I use the variables, but I add this optimize for unknown hint at the very end. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run each of these. And when I run each of these, we're going to get results back, you know, fairly quickly. It, this doesn't have to be, like, miraculously fast. What I want to show you here is... Uh, really, not really the cardinality estimation thing. Like, we can see the cardinality estimation thing here where, like, you know, for the first set of compiled parameters, we got a good estimate and everything was cool, right? Uh, well, I mean, really, up, up here is where it matters, where we seek into the index where the thing is. And where it falls off is when we look down here, where we get, oh, there's only 123 rows. And that's the same for both of these. Uh, and that gets, you know, 
I don't know, it becomes a thing <laughs> for the other th queries where, you know, the second time we compile with the actual parameters, uh, we get the cardinality estimate from the first one. And that also is true of, uh, oh, stop moving. Gosh darn it, you silly thing. That's also true of the two optimized for unknown things where we get the, uh, the you know, the actual number of rows, but of the much worse guess, right? So this guess just is stupid for everyone. Doesn't make any sense. But, uh, you know, the parameter sensitivity aspect of the first one is why a lot of people end up doing the op the, either the local variables or the optimized for unknown thing. Uh, I've had a number of people tell me that they thought it was a best practice in SQL Server, at which point uh, I feel like this hand got real slappy. And not, not in a way that would gratify anyone. So... What really bothers me with this stuff, though, is just to clear thing, just to clear things out a little bit, so I don't have six plans staring at me. Uh, what I, what really annoys me is when you run a store procedure like this one, uh, and you get the actual execution plans. What you'll see if you go to the properties of this. Uh, now, let's say you're in a situation like me, where you're a young, handsome consultant, and someone has hired you to help them uh, tune their queries and their store procedures and all that other good stuff, and you're trying to help, like try, you're trying to reproduce a performance problem with a store procedure. If you use actual parameters in your store procedure, well, what you'll end up with over here are the uh, compile and runtime values for both of these, right? So there's the parameter compile value, there's the parameter runtime value. We see that repeat for both of the parameters that were passed in. So if I wanted to, I could very easily take these out and or I could take the compile values out, run the procedure and see if it's slow, see if we can make any improvements. Where that changes a bit, and I'm going to highlight this so it doesn't disappear on us, where that changes a bit is if we look at the local variable version of this, uh, some things start to disappear on us. All of a sudden, all we have are the runtime values. Now, if, you have, if you're looking at it, if you're able to execute a store procedure, the runtime value should be obvious to you because you just put them in. You just told SQL Server what to do there, right? And that's going to be the same for down here as well, where all of a sudden uh, all we have is, well, um, the, the runtime value, right? Just zero and two there. So that's okay, but this isn't really my problem. My problem is if we look in query store or the plan cache and we're like, wow, that store procedure sure was slow. We should probably do something about it. Uh, if we look at what happened in there, I'm going to show you two things. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you all three things. Uh, the first query up top should be the optimized for unknown hint. And if we look at the query plan for this, and we say, "Well, this was this was the slowest thing in there. Let's 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 see what the let's see what the let's see what we passed in there, and let's let's try to figure out how we can re reproduce this performance issue so we can start fixing it." Well, we don't have a, a parameter list over here, right? For, you know, for a, a little bit of, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, a little bit of contrast on that. Uh, let's look at the query plan for the third one, which has nothing on it. If we look at the query plan for the third one, we have a parameter list here, and we can see what the compile time values were, right? So we can get the compile values for both of these parameters and we could plug these into the store procedure and we could say, oh, this is why you are slow. We can fix that. But optimize for unknown and the local variables strip that stuff out. They completely hide that information from you. So you have absolutely no idea what happened in there. This is the, uh, this is the one with the local variables and we don't have that parameter piece in here so that we can reproduce this. Now, on the one hand, I think this is partially Microsoft's fault. Even though, the, even though these are local variables and optimized for unknown hints, you still know what the, what the values of the, th of the parameters they were compiled with were, even if those parameters didn't really come into play for cardinality estimation. Remember when you use local variables of the optimized for unknown hint, SQL Server looks at the different part of the histogram that tells it how uh, unique it thinks the column is that you're looking at and how many rows are in the table and it multiplies those together. So even though the values weren't used for cardinality estimation, the compile value should still be in the query plan because they might be useful. Amazing, I know, right? Why, like, why wouldn't they be there? But this is just another crappy side effect of people following bad advice or people following awful 
like not existent advice that optimize for unknown and using local variables to substitute parameters in is a best practice. You end up in situations where it's impossible to figure to reproduce anything to pull it out. And then you're then you're stuck trying to figure out like, okay, is there application logging for what people did? Uh, like what are common values for things? For me, with the Stack Overflow database, it's very easy to like look at the reputation column and look at the upvotes column and just come up with a couple values. In real life, if you're trying to find like customer IDs and order IDs and dates and all sorts of other things that could really make or break you being able to reproduce a performance issue, it really screws you badly. So please, 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 please stop doing this. Um, you know, recompile hints are almost the opposite because recompile hints will cache the actual values, but not like in the parameter section. You have to like look at where <laughs> you have to like look at where you touch the index to see what actual values were applied in there. So recompile has its own sort of issues, but typically once something has a recompile hint on it, it's usually fast anyway. So <laughs> I'm kidding. Re recompile doesn't fix everything. It just fixes crap like this. So that's that's nice too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, please stop using local variables as parameter substitutes, uh, and please stop using optimize for unknown hints because they make my job harder. My job's already hard. I have to fix your code, and your indexes, and your databases, on your servers. It's not easy, but it's okay. My rates are reasonable. All right. Thank you for watching.